So hi, I'm Hiko Simon and Rochelle Kopp. And we are back with episode three of How Not to Screw Up in Japan. Uh, and for today's topic, we're going to talk about uh, what, uh, what, what Rochelle's tips are for people from other countries who are working with Japanese people. So check it out. So, for a start, what kind of scenarios are we talking about? Are you talking about working or client situations? Or yeah, what? any kind of work or client situations. That's that's the area I tend to focus on. And you know, obviously, there's all sorts of ways that people interact with Japanese business people. Yeah. And they might be working for a Japanese company. They might be selling things to a Japanese company. Yeah. They might be um, you know working for a foreign firm that has operations in Japan, and so dealing with their colleagues who are based in Japan. Yeah. They might have hired Japanese in, to work for them in other countries as well. Um, joint venture partners, investors, suppliers, Yeah, list goes on and on. So for a start, and this is how I always come back to, I mean, there is, there is this torn thing, most people will presume, you just treat Japanese like people, like anyone else. Mm -hmm. They're not Martians or whatever. Right. But there again, you can get burned by being a little bit too presumptive of familiarity. So, I right. mean, we're, what, are the, what are the pitfalls and traps of dealing with, uh, and, and we're talking basically from a Western American perspective, That's to right. be clear. Mm -hmm. What are the pitfalls that people can get stuck with or have misunderstandings with working with Japanese people? Well, I think the really big thing that people do is talk too much and don't listen enough. Oh, I, I can't relate. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I, I, I know what you mean. And in fact... There is a tendency, I think there are differences between different Western cultures as well, but mm -hmm. there is definitely a tendency, particularly with Americans and Australians, and, and I'm guilty of this, I'm half Australian, um, of feeling the, 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 the desperate need to fill silence. Yes, exactly. Silence feels weird and you just feel like you have to say something. And, and then you take the way the time the Japanese need to gather their thoughts and feel comfortable talking. Yeah. And so then you have a whole conversation where they're not saying even half of what they really are thinking. Yeah. And you're not getting the information you need. It's funny, now that you mentioned that, I remember watching, I remember participating in an interview once with an American boss interviewing somebody. And I swear for one hour, the, the American boss did not let the interviewee get a single word in. Oh, no. <laughs> And we came out of it. I felt sorry for the guy. You know, I'm oh, trying to sure. cut in and ask the guy questions and give things to talk. And, and he started talking. And we came out. And the boss came out. I thought he was really good. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, well, that was a great interview. I just got to hear myself talk for an hour. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, but that, unfortunately, that, that kind of thing happens all too often. Yeah, yeah. So, but, so what, but what's the risk? I mean, so we go, we tell them what they think. They sit there. They obviously agree with everything. All, well, all they're good. obvious. Or they're not agreeing. That's the problem. And you don't, you don't ever find out, right? Well, no, not until... <laughs> until something doesn't happen that you're expecting to happen, right? Exactly. Right, right. Or, or three days later, oh, by the way, that thing, we decided something else, right? So listening. But, again, is that, is that so unique, though, with Japanese people that you have to listen? I mean, well, well, okay, so that's something that you have to... Maybe they won't, they'll be more reticent about talking culturally. They'll be a bit more held back, so you right. need to be self-aware about that. That, that right, is a right. good point. Mm -hmm. Well, what are the other pitfalls, well, do you think? Well, I think one other pitfall is that Japanese, and this is a particularly very strong Japanese trait, tend to be not very specific in their communication. Yes. Leave things very vague, leave a lot of things to be read between the lines or not clear. And because among Japanese themselves, they don't always make things very specific. And so it's very important when you're dealing with Japanese to don't ever leave anything ambiguous. And if you aren't sure what they mean, you have to ask follow-up questions and draw out more information. That's very good advice that I give, and it is never taken. <laughs> I, I mean, you know, Japanese culture generally, in my experience, most business thing, you know, it's all about creating a sense of harmony. And right. there's this belief that if you've got the sense of harmony, that all the problems will work themselves out when you run into them. And let's not ruin our sense of harmony by talking about them now. <laughs> Right. And I'm the guy who shakes them and says, now is when you talk about the right, problems. Right, well, especially from a legal perspective, right? That's well, what lawyers are supposed to do, right? Yes. You know, we shake them and ask for money. But, <laughs> you know, we're trying to actually stop them from having problems later on. You know, uh -huh. I know we, we sound like negative Nellies thinking of all of these problems that are never going to happen. All right. But in America is, of course, a very legalistic culture and right. a culture where everyone's mm -hmm. always thinking about all the things that can go wrong. And mm -hmm. But, yes, there is a real kicking and screaming in terms of getting into specific details or getting into difficult points. Right. Um, 
So yeah, I mean, just from contracts, Japanese contracts tend to be very thin, American contracts right. tend to be huge. I love exactly. Japanese contracts. <laughs> it's a lot easier, right? <laughs> They're much easier. Uh, it's just a matter of, yeah, do we, it's always a question of, did we leave anything really major out? Mm -hmm. Whereas with America, it's like, did they leave anything in there that I missed that's going to, you know, a any gotchas or anything like right, that? Right, the right, whole right. philosophy is different. But okay, so yes, making the Japanese side be specific about stuff, definitely. Right, right, right. And, 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 and maybe making them is not the right word, but pulling things out. Yeah. Maybe gently, but asking a lot of questions and following up a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just don't ever go away saying, oh, well, I guess they meant this, or I assume this, because yeah. you're probably assuming wrong. Yeah, yeah. It's really hard, isn't it, with presumptions that you just, you, because people only know what they know. They don't right. know what they don't know, and they presume, and, and especially if you've got very powerful business guys or whatever, people have been very successful in business, they mm -hmm. presume that they know. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. So, okay, very, very good. So, yes, these are a few tips for working with people from the Japanese people, if uh -huh. you're from a non-Japanese country, mm -hmm. and uh, we've got more in the series, so... Uh, Check out the next episode when it goes up. Yeah, peace.